Feeney. I'm an artist from Cleveland, Ohio, and I was asked to be a part of the Sonata Number no. 5 project. When I was asked, I was very thrilled and honored. Of course, I worked with Chris prior to this and several shows at the Art Neo, so I was thrilled. I knew it was going to be handled in a very professional and with his touch. So that was really amazing. I was very thrilled to be asked. Then I got to the music, you know, and I'm, I was very fond of it. I'm, um, I enjoy piano immensely. And when I listen to music, because as a musician myself, um, it's difficult to approach somebody else's, you know, their sense of being that they're kind of communicating through their music. Um, and with Ryan's, I felt it just, we were, it was a similar frequency. There's a certain somberness to it, a certain soul searching kind of um, quality to it. And I, I mean, I don't want to say it, it had any sense of melancholy or, you know, any of those kind of negative emotions. But for me, it was a very fulfilling to listen to it. So I was struck, of course, by the first movement. Um, and so when I listened to the whole thing through several times, and then I was really stuck on the first movement. I love the way it, it kind of approaches, you know, the listener in a very slow, quiet beginning, a very serene kind of um, atmosphere. And then it slowly started to swirl. I found this sense of, uh, like almost a very tumultuous tempest kind of like swirling of notes and sounds and but with this there was a certain discordance to it you know so you would be getting to this certain feeling of like um, exultation and then you'd get a certain kind of discordant notes to bring you back to like a certain place that i felt like i understood you know um, I'm not a topical artist. I can't just take a specific topic and transfer it into something visual. You know, that's it's just not my approach to art. Whether it's this, meaning there was no words to it, and it was completely, you know, allow it to be, you know, inundated in my conscious mind and just kind of letting it play around in there. And with most of our projects, that I, my own and such, that I kind of, I try to, I guess in a way become more of a conduit, you know, you kind of replace your ego, kind of free yourself of that kind of sense of time and place and just allow it to completely permeate you and then just to kind of pass through. And I think that's the kind of feeling, emotional feeling that I had from it initially was a certain calm and that certain calm might have accounted for the blues, a certain textures you know that it seemed to have this peaceful, serene, blue sky and nature to it. Um, but then I started feeling that discordance and the notes and the notes and there was a swirling and it just kind of took a life on of its own. The way I again, approached it is I would sat here and unfortunately I didn't have a chord for my, uh, my uh, iPad. So I had to play the music on the other side of the room. So I'd start painting 
and then I would have to stop and go back and play, hit the button again. And I just kept that distance so that I wouldn't get comfortable in one position. So I just back and forth and back and forth, but just the music over and over, probably a good six hours, maybe six or so hours. And then I'm just going through that process. And then just, like I said, it just happens. The, the imagery that comes forth, um, you know, I was asking, you know, I think there's many faces. So I don't always see them. I do see some of them. I, like, oddly enough, I mean, there are times when I, I just can't see it, but I usually do. But I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of notes. So there's many notes. And so there's many faces representing the kind of many notes that are played. So. Yeah, that's, I mean, as far as the, the uh, very deep and kind of, uh, intrinsic or kind of subconscious level, I really couldn't tell you. It just happens. <laughs>